Hi, I'm Tom. In case you didn't know, I'm in the process of taking my Honda Odyssey to the next level by installing a standalone ECU. If you're not already familiar, the OEM ECU in the Honda Odyssey is completely locked from the factory. Aside from the automatic trims, there's no way to put a different tune on there to take full advantage of any aftermarket parts you put on the engine. That's why I had to spend $1,400 on this rather simple computer. Thanks AEM. At least it won't randomly reboot to install updates when you walk away. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Windows. Anyways, let's get into it. The ECU I wound up going with for this project is the AEM Series 2. It's a full standalone ECU and it comes in several different models with different connectors on it, allowing you to plug it directly into an existing vehicle's harness. Luckily for me, AEM makes a model that's compatible with the J35A4 in my Odyssey. However, there is one caveat. This ECU wasn't really designed for use in the Odyssey or any other car that shipped with the J-Series. It was designed to be put in a car that's had a J-Series swapped into it. And then you could carry over the harness from that donor car that you got that engine from. Because of this, there's some extra work I had to do to install this ECU. Erring on the side of caution, I removed all the pins that went to things that the ECU wouldn't control. This included items like the EVAP, EGR, cruise control, and all the automatic transmission controls. That's right, this ECU will not control an automatic transmission. It is designed specifically to be used with a manual. That's why I'm building a separate module to control it. You can check out the videos I've made so far up there. And I should have another video in the next week or two, depending on how long it takes for some parts to arrive. Make sure you're subscribed so you can see it. And if you don't want to risk missing it, go ahead and click on that bell icon so you get notified every time I publish a new video. Anyways, I was dreading working on the harness because some genius at Honda put the factory computer behind all the climate control stuff. And on top of that, all the connectors were facing the driver's side, so I'd have pedals in my face the whole time working on this stupid harness. After disconnecting both batteries, I went ahead and unplugged the ECU, took it out, and then I began the miserable process of working on this harness that's way too short with these pedals stuck in my face as I can barely reach what I'm working on. However, I soon realized I could detach the grommet in the firewall and feed the engine harness back into the engine bay. I can't say that detaching this grommet was easy, I had a lot of hoses and other stuff that was in my way. However, once I did get it removed, it was so much easier to work on the harness. This is a lot better. All right. Now that I could comfortably work on the harness, I went ahead and pulled up the diagram I made a while back and I got to work depinning the harness. It's important to note that the connectors Honda used, they're not necessarily difficult to depin, but it takes a lot of finesse and the plastic is really soft so if you're really not careful you can destroy these connectors really easily so if you're doing this just be sure that you take your time i'll even admit there was one pin i messed up pretty badly on and i couldn't get it out of the connector however it was just the secondary o2 heater and since i didn't need that i just snipped the wire can't win them all i suppose since there's so many wires some wire colors are used multiple times because of this as I was depinning, I wrote down each pin's connector and pin number as I was taking them out on a piece of white electrical tape and I put that over the pin. This would help me identify which pin is which later on if I needed to. And as a bonus, it'll also help prevent any accidental short circuits. After about an hour or so and feeling very violated by the residue left behind by the 18 year old electrical tape, I had removed all the extra pins I needed from the harness. With the harness modifications completed, I went ahead and fed it back through the hole in the firewall and plugged everything into the new ECU. Once the oh so wonderful Pennsylvania winter weather decided it didn't wanna be cold and rainy anymore, I went ahead and opened up the garage to see if I could get the van started. Before starting for the first time, it's important to load a base calibration file onto the ECU. This calibration file is sort of your tune, but it also contains important information such as pin assignments and how many injectors and all that stuff is on your engine. While trying to flash the calibration file, I ran into issues with my computer not communicating with the ECU. Not sure what's going on there. And it turns out, that I just needed to install drivers for it, even though the manual and everything for the ECU says you don't need them. I guess things have changed since that was published. Luckily, you can just download it from AAM's website and it'll install with no issues whatsoever. After installing the driver, I was able to flash the calibration to the ECU and I went ahead to see if the van would start. You can now see a whole bunch of data. And this makes sense. The, the coolant temperature is probably around 50 degrees and falling. Yeah, this is, this is all good. So now let's check what the uh, what the map sensor says. All right. And so now we're ready to start the engine. Let's do this. All righty. And so everything here 
working like expected. Let's see if uh, it'll start. All right. I was definitely getting worried with how long it was cranking. However, I was pleasantly surprised that it did in fact turn over. After making sure the van idled okay, I went ahead and started calibrating or syncing the ignition timing, not to be confused with valve or cam timing. Yeah, so that seems right. So, we are good. It's as simple as locking the ignition timing on your ECU, and then advancing or retarding the timing based on what you see when you use your timing light. After I finished syncing the timing, the engine ran even better than before, which is a great sign. Even though the ECU is good to go, I still can't drive the van quite yet. I need to finish the transmission controller before I can get it moving under its own power. Well, okay, the other day I found out it will move without the transmission controller. However, it's really not a drivable scenario. In addition to that, I need to rework the J-pipe to eliminate some leaks. I'll also be installing the wideband sensor I got, which is basically just an O2 sensor and it'll connect to the ECU and gauge and tell me what my air fuel ratio is. And that's gonna help me immensely when it comes time to actually start tuning. As I rework this J pipe, it's gonna be going from an equal length setup to an unequal length setup. So it's either gonna sound really good or really bad. I have no idea. There's really not much stuff about that for the J series. So if you're not subscribed, make sure you are so you don't miss a single bit of progress on this crazy build. Only a matter of weeks until I can get this thing back out on the road and you're definitely gonna wanna see it. As always, let me know what you think down in the comments and until next time, stay classy.